On this episode of Doing the Most, we're making Jack Keller's banana wine. Homemade brews and various artists, everything from meat to roast. Big creation, fermentation, and ebriation, doing the most. This banana wine is part of a broader series on Jack Keller's recipes. Jack Keller was basically the OG of home winemaking knowledge. He was a genius who explored basically every fermentable he could get his hands on, including fruits, vegetables, roots, flowers, herbs, and he wrote the book on the topic. And so in this series, we have been brewing up Jack Keller's wines and seeing how they turn out. And seeing what we can learn from Jack's processes. And this video series is sponsored by Homebrew Ohio, so we cannot go without thanking them for providing some of the gear and equipment used to make these Jack Keller wines. Banana is an interesting homebrewing subject. I have made banana wine in the past. In fact, I won this blue ribbon for my banana wine. Unfortunately, not for how the wine turned out, but for having the best label. That banana wine was fine. It was like a banana wine fortified with brandy. I thought it turned out okay, and I thought some age did it really well. However, it wasn't perfect, and I've brewed with bananas quite a few times over the years and never really found it to be perfect. And so I'm kind of excited to taste the Jack Keller banana wine for the first time on this episode. A couple of things in here, the bananas are skin on. They're gonna be cut into medallions with the skin. And so be aware of that. I know some folks are concerned about pesticides on banana skins. And so if that's the case for you, you might want to wash and scrub it really well with something kind of abrasive or just look for organic bananas that have not been treated with pesticides. The banana peels though do add some good tannin structure as well as additional aromatics that complement the banana flavor of the fruit. And so they are important in this recipe. And usually, I give a disclaimer here about how Jack's wine recipes usually don't result in a full gallon once you move them from primary to secondary. It's more like half a gallon to three quarters of a gallon depending on the fruit load. And this one, we kind of followed it by the book and it said to add water to one gallon. And so we just added a full gallon of water when making this one and did end up with almost a gallon on the other end because the bananas don't really give up much in the way of juice. And so it was kind of a one-to-one -one transfer primary to secondary. And one last thing before we get to the ingredients, Jack insists that the bananas must be hella ripe, like over overripe. And so actually I did a lot of these wines in the same couple of day stretch, but my banana wine I actually made like a week and a half later because I kept waiting and waiting and waiting for the bananas to get to that point where they were just like aggressively ripe. And so be prepared when you buy your bananas, either buy really overripe bananas or wait until they start getting really spotted and speckled and streaky and then you know that they're ready. Part of the reason for that is because there's a starch conversion happening as they ripen where they get sweeter and sweeter and you get more fermentable sugars out of them. However, you're gonna see that Jack uses amylase enzyme in here and he doesn't specify, so we used glucoamylase enzyme and that helps convert some of those remaining starches into sugars. And I used glucoamylase instead of the other amylase enzymes because it does work really well at room temperature, which is the temperature I was fermenting at. All that said, let's take a look at the ingredients. The ingredients for Jack Keller's banana wine are four and a half pounds of bananas, one pound, 14 ounces of sugar, half a teaspoon of pectic enzyme, half a teaspoon of amylase enzyme, one eighth teaspoon of grape tannin, one gram of Fermade K, and one teaspoon of yeast nutrient. Our yeast will be Lalvin's D47. So those are the ingredients, not a super intimidating list. And this is one of the cheapest wines from Jack Keller's book that we've made because bananas are so stinking cheap all the time. So this might be a good introductory wine for somebody who's wanting to start their first home brew, but on a budget. So let's take a look at how it's done. This recipe, like many of Jack's recipes, starts with a whole heckin' lot of fruit. And we're gonna leave those peels on the bananas. 
We'll begin by putting one quart of water in to boil. And then we're gonna put all of our bananas into these muslin straining bags. That way it just kind of keeps all the fruit and pulp together. So that way it's not floating in one big mashed potato we mess in your bucket. Then we're gonna add our hot water to the sugar. That way we can get it dissolved. Just give that a little stir, stir, stir. And then we'll pour it directly on top of the bananas. Give those just a little bit of a mash with a potato masher just to make sure the liquid saturates throughout the bags. And then we're going to let that cool for a bit. About an hour later we're going to add all of our powders. Our amylase enzyme goes in. Then our grape tannins go in. Just give them a little stir, stir, stir. And then we'll add some more water to get it up to the one and a half gallons mark because we've got so much fruit in here. It's gonna take some extra liquid to get a gallon quantity. Our pectic enzyme goes in. And now our yeast nutrients go in both diammonium phosphate and Fermade K. Stir, stir, stir. And then our yeast goes in. We'll cover that, put it under airlock, and let it ferment. Every day we'll open that up and move the bananas around just to make sure they don't get dried out. We don't want any vectors for mold growing in here. And after 10 days, we will remove the bananas, squeeze all the liquid out, and let it finish fermenting. About two weeks later, we get that racked off into a clean and sanitized carboy. And then after about a month of cold crashing, we get it into bottles. And here we are, a few months later, with a beautiful crystal clear bottle of banana wine. Of banana wine. It's got a nice amber, maybe gold yellow, not really amber, gold yellow kind of color to it. About what you would expect from fermented bananas. There's big banana on the nose. It, almost like artificial banana, you know, like a banana runt. But there are like fruity, cidery, berry notes in there too. I'm picking up a little bit of blueberry, a little bit of tart apple, and a little bit of like a banana, like a Laffy Taffy kind of thing going on in there. There's a lot happening on the nose. All right, let's get in here. Huh. So one thing I hadn't pointed out yet is we are tasting all of Jack Keller's wines dry. That means no back sweetening, so no stabilizing, no pasteurizing, and no sugars added. Just the completely dry wine product that you get from that initial fermentation phase just allowed to clear and bottled and so this is a whole hell of a lot like what a banana would taste like if it had no sugar which is kind of weird there is a deep dryness to this it's grippy and tannic and you can sense that banana peel. Like when you peel a banana, the smell of that kind of gritty fibrousness of the peel that's like leafy and verdant, you can taste that in the wine. There's not a juicy, luscious banana character there. It's not vegetal, 
but it's not fruity either. It kind of rides that line in a way. There is just a bit of cideriness there, which is characteristic usually of country fruit wines. And just a touch of acid. Uh, Jack in his book recommends that you can do acid adjustments. I don't know that I would have wanted that here. I definitely think this would stand out if it was back sweetened. There's just, there's something about tasting a banana wine that doesn't have sweetness that makes you question the, the amount of banana that is in there or the process involved in extracting the flavor from that banana. But I think just adding back some sweetness would elevate all of those banana characters. Whereas again, right now it a little bit tastes green and I mean, like the banana peel, like I would equate this if you've, if you've ever had the misfortune of biting into a banana peel, it, it, it's got that character to it. You know, it's not in the spirit of the experiment, but I'm gonna bag sweeten this just a little bit. All right, I made some simple syrup. So taking this into the realm of moderately sweet transforms it. You're still getting fermentation character in there. It's not like biting into a big juicy sweet banana, but that sweetness really just, it ties everything together. In previous videos, I've talked about the triforce of balance, acid, tannin, and sweetness, and how getting all of those things into alignment can create a truly great fermented product. And just, you know, bringing up the sweetness level kind of considerably, bananas are pretty sweet when they're overripe, really transforms this into something nice. Again, this is part of a series on Jack Keller's home winemaking book. We are making one recipe a month from that book. And so it's part of a broader playlist. Feel free to check that out for more country fruit wines from Jack's book. And again, a big thanks to Homebrew Ohio for sponsoring this series. If you like this video, please hit subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any new episodes. And there are all these ways you can engage with the Doing the Most community online. Until next time, happy brewing, happy winemaking. Here's to Jack. Stay well. Cheers.